Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about these, the DJI Goggles 2, and specifically we're going to be taking a deeper dive and having a look at the main PCB, have a look at what DJI have done internally on the board, and take a look at the internal antennas as well. A few weeks ago on the channel I did a teardown on the goggles, but I didn't go all the way in because I needed them working for the next day. However, a user since then has torn his goggles down and he has shared with me some high-res images of the main board as well as an image of the internal antennas, and that is what we're going to take a look at today. Before we do that, I want to say a massive thank you to the user who has done this. They have asked to be nameless, so we shall honour that, but we all owe you a massive thank you for sharing with us these images. It really does give us a great idea of what DJI have done in these goggles compared to the other ones. Now, just before I jump into it, I just want to say, if you find this video useful, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon in the description. It is only with the support of my Patreons am I able to keep making content like this, and if you're interested in supporting the channel, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, let's hop over to the desktop and let's take a look at what's going on on the board on these goggles. Okay, so on the screen you can see the main top side of the PCB inside the goggles too. So a reminder again, the new ones here that were supplied with the Avata drone. Now, there are some things in here I'm going to walk you through. There is nothing particularly shocking that I found already. The layout of things is pretty much what I was expecting, but I am going to walk you through each segment on the top side of the board, and then we'll flip over to the bottom. Now, in the middle here, you can see the big one, and that is the P1 chipset from DJI, or whoever the manufacturer actually is. This is the same chipset that we have seen in all of the DJI OcuSync systems. It is the same chipset that has been used in the FPV system, i.e. the Goggles 1, the Cadex Vista and the Ear Unit, as well as the Goggles version 2. There is no new chipset with regards to the RF setup on these goggles. You can see it is the same P1. We then have four gigabits of storage there next to it, which is SRAM. We then over this side of the board have the RF area. Here we have the IE1000 transceivers, again exactly the same as what we've had on previous DJI models. We have our power amplifiers, four of these in total, two for 5.8 gigs and two for 2.4, allowing us to have that full four antenna setup with the UFLs up there and then the switching options on that as well. So what you have is a 2.4 and a 2.4 gig on each of the transceivers and then a 5 gig and a 5 gig on the transceivers allowing it to switch between the others. The big change on these goggles compared to the V1s and V2s is this chipset over here. This is what is known as the E3T or the Eagle, and this is the main processor that DJI are now using in the Goggles 2. This is new to the Goggles line. We didn't have this chipset in the Goggles version 1 or version 2, and this is where DJI are doing all of the heavy lifting for the processing side of these Goggles. It is coupled to 8 gigs of SRAM or DDR4 over here. So that is the main RAM for this media chipset. And then you have the four gigs RAM here for the P1. Now the setup DJI will have in this is rather than using the P1 like they have in the past for all of the processing for the FPV system, what they will be doing now is basically using the P1 as just a modem and then using the E3T as the main processor for handling the image processing and all of the operating system on the actual goggles. On the previous goggles, and we'll take a look at the main board on that in a minute, they were using the P1 for everything. And whilst the P1 is capable of that, it isn't able to handle some of the more higher performance needs that you will have with the goggles too. And that's why they're offloading that processing power to the E3T. And this is basically what they do on their consumer drones. They use the P1 as the main modem and then they use the E3T as the main system processor. 
On this side of the board, there really isn't anything else particularly special. You can see that there's an unpopulated area here for more RAM for the P1 if they needed it, but the chances are it isn't needed simply because they're using the E3T. And then over here, we have some more stuff as well. What's interesting is there's a large unpopulated chipset over here. We don't know what that is, but it is clear that it wasn't needed, at least in this current version of the goggles. And we've got some smaller chipsets up here. Nothing spectacular. Not exactly sure what that is. Probably power stages, if I'm honest. They're certainly away from the processing side of things. So the probability is that they're processing or something like that power stages. If we then just take a look at the main board over here, you have got some sundry chipsets down here. We have power stages. We have a back. We've got a coil here, a chipset, a coil here, a chipset, another chipset. What these are all likely is the power supply for the P1 as well as the E3T. If we zoom out and now hop over to the back of the board, we can see there really isn't a dramatic amount going on here. We have some EMC storage. This is four gigs. This is where the operating system will be stored. It's just the flash chip basically for storing the OS. We have what is definitely power stages and power supply over here. You can see all the different coils. If we see here, we got one, two, three, four. So this very much reminds me of the low level power stage that we found on the Vista and the air unit. We've got another one here with again, more coils, one, two, three, four. So all of this area here is power regulation. We've then got some more filtering capacitors, some more power regulation on the back here. And then over this side here, we've got the back side of where the main power amplifiers are. You can see them located there. And then you've got some copper spots there, again, helping to dissipate the heat off the transceivers and the PAs. And then again, more power regulation over here with much bigger coils this time. Chances are this is the main buck converter for the system over there. So on the PCB itself, everything is pretty straightforward. There's nothing particularly spectacular here. This front end setup is very much the same as we've seen on the Goggles 2, especially when looking at it on dual band. Here is an image of the main board on the DJI FPV Goggles version 1. It is basically the same board on the version 2. The only difference is that they've populated the two power amplifier outputs for the 2.4 band rather than just the 5.8. But if we have a look in the version 2 goggles, we again have the P1 chipset. We have our RAM. We have our EMC storage over here. We have a battery and then we have again our transceivers, our AE1000s, and then we have our dual stages for our power amplifier at EIO. So on these, the V1s, they simply only had one amplifier on each transceiver because they're only on single band. But on the V2s, they populated both of these, meaning it allowed it to have that 2.4 and 5.8 gigs with the UFL antennas over here. The big difference really, as I've said already on this board compared to the Goggles 2, is that there's no E3T or even Eagle 2 processing on board. All of the processing, all of the OS and everything was run off the P1 chipset. So the P1 was doing everything. Again, just looking at this here, this is the IE1000s on the Goggle V1s. You can see same front end power stage going down to our main RF amplifiers. Just quickly taking a look at the back of the board on the V1 goggles. Again, nothing here like we've seen on the V2s, just more power regulation, more filtering and regulation and empty space. Now, what's super interesting is just how much DJI have been able to cram and reduce the size of the board needed on the goggles too. Really, we have a board here that is much smaller, yet has more on it. So what DJI have been able to do is just reduce the footprint of everything, make the packaging of the product smaller, and then add more in. 
you really can also see the IP style blocks of design that DJI use on their products these days. It's something that I've noticed in their recent designs that everything is very much laid out in the blocks of design that they've done them on their software. So you've got the block here for the front end, you've got the block here for the processing, the block here for the main SOC, and you can almost see them just dropping the blocks in in the design process and then just slowly moving everything around. But overall, the layout of everything is very logical, very straightforward, and really what they've been able to do most of all is just reduce the footprint of everything. The chipsets remain the same, just really compact down the space for the additional circuitry. Next, I just want to quickly show you the location of the internal antennas on the goggles. Now, when I did my teardown, I did think that they were located on the sides here, but then I changed my mind as I moved through that video. However, now we actually know. So if we hop over to the desktop again. Okay, so here we have the two internal antennas. And what's interesting is they're basically set up in a cross design in the middle of the goggles. Just to explain where this is, this is the main cooling fan in the goggles, which is located in the middle. And what DJI have then done is mounted the PCBs in a cross pattern on the back of that fan in the middle. You can then see the two wires heading off and that is then heading off to the UFL connectors. Just to show that on the actual goggles, that is right here in the middle. So the fan is there and what we have is the antennas going across corner to corner, right in the middle of the goggles there. So we have our two external antennas up top, and then you have the two other antennas located directly in the middle behind this nose piece. So with regards to the internal processing and PCB, there really isn't anything surprising here. We knew already it was using the E3T, and really what DJI are doing here is using the P1 basically as a modem, and then using the E3T as the main media processor, allowing them to offload that heavy lifting from the P1 and use that chipset to give us the improved performance that we have. The chances are this is exactly what they're going to be doing on the Oculus Sync 3 ear unit as well and what they're doing in the Avata and that's how DJI have been able to maintain the use of their chipset through many many different models but then pairing it up with a better chipset if needed to do the heavy lifting in more demanding applications. Whilst there was no surprises on the board, the big surprise for me was on the location of those internal antennas. I assumed they were going to be around this area here. However, no, we have a cross section of them in the middle and it'll be interesting to see what performance improvements people can and get on this system with external antennas. We haven't seen any from anyone yet. However, they are using a replaceable connector, i.e. the MCX connector. I'm sure we will get manufacturers release them in the future, but it will be interesting to see how the mounting of those antennas has an effect on the performance, because you're not going to be ideally able to put something across the front now, because you're going to block those front antennas. You're going to need to keep patches to the side, keeping that center area free. Anyway, I hope you have found this video interesting. If you have, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon in the description. I want to say a massive thank you to all the patrons of my channel. I would not have been able to keep making content on this system as you have seen today without their support. And if you would like to support us to keep making content like this in the future, please do check it out. And again, a massive thank you from me to the user. I'm going to get the images up on repair.wiki and there'll be a link to that in the description as well. That's it. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.